It's a twin turbocharged V8 Ferrari from the 80s that is an absolute angular wedge of perfection. No, not the F40. It's predecessor. It's baby brother. The 288 GTO. In order to properly understand the story of the 288, we first must look at the beginning. The 308 GTB, which was the replacement for the DO246 in 1975. There's a lot of numbers, but basically the 308 replaced the old Dino V6 mid-engine sports cars from the mid-70s. And it was designed by Pininfarina and featured a mid-engine 252 horsepower V8. So it was basically as good as a 70s car could be. Now it's most famous for being the hero car of Magnum PI, but for our case, we're going to be looking at Ferrari's most overlooked motorsport adventure, the Group 4 308. A Ferrari dealer, Michelotto, managed to sneak some factory support for a rally program despite Fiat's efforts with the Lancia Stratos and the Fiat 131 at Bar. Now this rally car Ferrari started as a bare chassis and was built from the ground up into a full Group 4 WRC car with titanium construction, a full roll cage, rally suspension, and a rebuilt engine. That rebuilt engine got better injectors, higher compression pistons, new bearings, and more powerful spark plugs to make 288 horsepower. The gearbox was fitted with shorter gear ratios to increase acceleration on the technical rally stages, and the body was made out of Kevlar and fiberglass. The Rally Ferrari started out strong, winning the 1979 Rally de Monza, but it never truly had WRC pace, with a best finish of second in the 1982 Tour de Corsa. Therefore, the only logical thing to do was to make an even better Group B version, now making 310 horsepower and featuring lighter and stronger suspension, quicker steering, and most importantly, Rally fog lights, it was a proper little beast. And again, Similar to their Group 4 efforts, the Group B 308 never had the factory support of the true rally monsters, but it did manage to win several national titles, including the Spanish Rally Championship in 1985. This mild success convinced Ferrari to invest more in the road racing side of Group B with the 308 GTM. It was a silhouette car, through and through, with carbon fiber covering its tube frame and its 370 horsepower V8 attached to a Formula One dual plate clutch. It also had the most extreme aero package out of the lot. Only three of them were built before Ferrari got sidetracked by other things. In order to understand what those other things were, let's backtrack to 1982. Ferrari was losing sales due to their fledgling lineup of GT cars. Simply put it, Ferrari had gone soft and Enzo wanted to bring some life back into the prancing horse. Enter Ferrari's Formula 1 engineer Nicola Manrazzi. He suggested turbocharging could work and told Enzo that he could get 400 horsepower from 3 liters of displacement. That caught Enzo's attention as he was trying to build a pure sports car harkening back to their driving-based roots. What became the 2.9-liter Ferrari V8 was based off the Lancia 2.6-liter V8 racing engine, and the Ferrari power plant had twin turbos, air-to-air -air intercoolers, Weber carburetors, and four valves per cylinder. In fact, the name 288 comes from the 2.85-liter V8. I guess rounding up was never one of their strengths. And it was a pretty impressive engine for the mid-80s. It made 395 horsepower and 367 torque, which made the 288 Grand Touring of Monogato one of the fastest production cars in the world. It had a 0 to 60 of 5 seconds flat and a top speed of 189 miles an hour. But Ferrari may have been able to get more speed if they had used a full 3 liter to Smaderaz he had specified. So why is it 2.85? Well, homologation. FIA rules said that turbocharging multiplied engine displacement by 1.4, and that the maximum displacement for Group B was 4 liters. So, doing the math, 2.85 times 1.4 equals 3.997 liters, which made it eligible 
for the class. Not rallying, mind you. Remember, the 308 GTM solidified Ferrari's tarmac ambitions. Instead, the 288 GTO is destined for the upcoming circuit racing series based off the Group B rules that was designed to replace the aging Group 5 cars. And Ferrari built 272 288 GTOs for homologation purposes, and they were cleared to race. Unfortunately, by 1986, when it was certified, Group B had gone a bit mad, with 450 horsepower to 600 horsepower mid-engine weapons that were running rampant. The 288 GTO was fast, but even in racing trim, it was 250 horsepower down on French hatchbacks, and up to 600 horsepower down on the psychopathic Lancia Delta S4. Ferrari needed it to be more, and more came in the form of the 1986 Evolucione. It used a loophole in the FIA rules which say that an evolution of the car could be created without a homologation run being required. So, the 288 Evo weighed under a thousand kilograms and made over 650 horsepower with the turbos cranked all the way up. The bodywork was a mixture of carbon fiber and Kevlar clamshells that sprouted huge wings, splitters, and dive planes, which made a force to be reckoned with in the corners. Despite all that, the 288 Evo was clocked at 225 miles an hour during testing. It was going to dominate the class. A class that was cancelled due to a series of fatal accidents and both the Group B rally and circuit racing aspects were cancelled, which meant that the 6288 Evos never got to race. But Freud didn't want to have useless sunk costs and evolved the 288 Evo into a new road legal version, one meant to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Ferrari. The F40 would go on to become one of the greatest Ferraris ever built, and it shares a lot in common with the 288. The styling is uncanny next to the 288 Evo, the double wishbone suspension was simply an upgraded GTO set, and the 2.9 liter V8 is shared between them, although the F40s is improved to 477 horsepower. And unlike the 288 Evo, the F40 LM did actually get to race at IMSA, Le Mans, and the Global GT Series, although it had mixed success at best. But all of that leaves the 288 GTO as a bit of an oddity. It's a homologation special to 308 that was designed for racing, but the 308 had a longer racing career than the 288 that was meant to replace it. And an interesting bit of trivia, the 288 is the last Ferrari GTO actually designed for homologation purposes after the 250 GTO for sports car racing in the 60s, and before the 599 GTO, which was designed for nothing. For years, the 288 GTO was a forgotten icon, lost in the Group B frenzy, just a fringe moment of history destined to be forgotten. But something's changed in the last few years. Not only are they rocketing up in value, but they are finally starting to get the appreciation it deserves.